Justin Bieber is on the verge of selling music rights to a publicly traded UK investment company backed by Blackstone in a $200 million transaction, according to the Wall Street Journal. Could Bieber's creative work possibly be worth that much, or are pop songs the, late, uh, the, the latest or last hyperinflated uh, asset uh, due for a correction? John Ford is here to weigh in. I've got a little bit of a bone to pick with you. I didn't, you didn't do this about Bob Dylan or, or well, uh, Bruce Springsteen. What, are you not a believer? About, What's wrong with Justin? But you're not a believer? You're not a believer? I think about it's really this, crass. Go ahead, John. Let's, but I've, I've got a bone to pick. Let's talk about this, Joe. I mean, look, yes, Bieber is a giant, giant pop star, but he's 28, and his music can't be worth $200 million, okay? I mean, 81-year-old Bob Dylan's catalog sold for $300 million two years ago. Last year, 73-year-old Bruce Springsteen sold his catalog to Sony for a reported $500 million, but he's the boss. I mean, the Springsteen and Dylan prices might be crazy, too, but at least we know that their sonic libraries have staying power. Blowing in the Wind and Born to Run are part of the great American songbook. A Love Yourself and Baby might get there, but we'll need a few more years before we're sure. So why is this happening? Well, we've known that megastars' bodies of work had value in the modern age since Michael Jackson famously bought the publishing rights to most of the Beatles catalog in 1985 for $47 million, which seems like a steal today, but in 1985 would literally buy you all the Lamborghini Countaches, which was my supreme measure of value in 1985. Anyway, these days in the streaming era, asset managers like BlackRock see catalogs of hit songs as gold. Music flows through commercials, movies, video games, and they want to own the hits. And hits do have major value, but not $200 million for Bieber's catalog just 15 years into his career. It's not just bubblegum music. It's a bubble, Joe. The value, though, of these catalogs held up pretty well, as you said. Uh, the Beatles or MJ, I mean, those things, they, they, they don't go down. Think of Taylor Swift. Maybe <laughs> investors know what they're doing. Yes, be careful. They'll make sure she wants you to own her catalog. On the other hand, <laughs> yeah. Bieber's catalog is probably worth every penny of $200 million. There's more to these music investments than you think. Case in point, Ryan Tedder. Who's that? A guy who sold a majority stake of his music catalog to KKR for $200 million last January. Ryan's the lead singer of One Republic, but that's not why he's mogul rich. Ryan Tedder is mogul rich because he helped produce the 21 and 25 albums for Adele and 1989 for Taylor Swift and helped write Halo and XO for Beyonce and Betjuana for Blackpink. Tedder's catalog includes slices of all that and a lot more. So for some of these artists, it's not just about the song itself. In this era where TikTok, Spotify, Peloton, and all kinds of other services need music to operate, the powers that own hits get data, special insight into emerging trends and services, early insight into the hot new thing. So back to Bieber. Because he was the standout male solo artist of the last decade, Justin Bieber's music probably will be a marker for millennial tastes for decades to come. By owning a piece of it, investors will get both a healthy stream of royalties and valuable clues into what digital projects and services young consumers will want next. So if you think that's not worth $200 million, I mean, what do you mean, Joe? Uh, all right, I have, they have more stuff written in here, but then I want to talk to you. On the, on the data side, <laughs> part of the value of Beaver's catalog is that he's got a little piece of so many different kinds of songs. Is, is that it? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, much. Despacito? I mean, it's like the top yeah. Latin hit of all. Right. Bieber's like, like a trillion the, views. Yeah, yeah. He's like the Kevin Bacon of millennial tastes and trends. It's like connected to everything. So if, if the new service pops up and that the young people want to be on and music starts streaming there, if you own pieces of Bieber's catalog, you're probably going to see and understand that first. You can buy shares in it.